President Obama rode into office on a wave of hope. Three years later, many left-wing Democrats and independents who supported him say they're disappointed. Katrina Vanden Heuvel, editor of The Nation magazine, is one of them. Her columns and commentaries about the president's first term are now part of a new book, The Change I Believe In, Fighting for Progress in the Age of Obama. And she joins us here this morning. Katrina, good to have you with Thank us here you. this morning. Thank you. Um, your book begins with a column written right after um, the president was elected back in 2008. Yeah. Uh, all this sense of hope and, and change. And, and then your, your columns quickly became more critical as this presidency, his first term, wore on. You know, there were great expectations, but even in that first column, really written the night when my colleagues at The Nation, we, we wept coming out of eight years of the Bush-Cheney years. There was a keen understanding that the real changes in this country have come about from movements from below, people's movements, whether it was the abolitionists who founded the nation pushing President Lincoln, or the labor unions pushing Franklin Delano Roosevelt to be a bolder president, or the civil rights movement with Lyndon Johnson. So that's really the theme of the book. Sure. You know, politicians break your heart, but what is important is that people stay involved, engaged, and hold politicians accountable to the higher ideals of this country. But on a personal level, has this president broken your heart at all? Uh, you know, I also wrote in this book that I thought progressives needed to be as tough, clear-eyed, and pragmatic about President Obama as he is about us. So in a curious way, the book is a mix of both romantic, but also hard-edged and, you know, cold-eyed about the state of our politics and a belief that the country and our political system at the moment is so hardwired to resist fundamental reform and change that it requires, again, the energy, for example, of the Occupy Wall Street movement and the 99 percent opening space for the sustained serious conversation we need in the media and this country about income inequality and fairness politics. And we see that moving President Obama. In New Hampshire yesterday, I thought it was a masterful weaving of the idea of rebuilding the American dream for the 99 percent through opportunity and security mm -hmm. and smoking out Republicans who are the Grinches of this season but as is, they block the job. Is bill. he doing enough, though, in his job as the leader of the country? He's been uh, criticized from all sides at this point, uh, most recently for what happened with the Super Committee. And a lot of people saying, of course, we hear from Republican candidates, but we're hearing from the other side as well, that he should be more involved. And if there is to be some sort of change, even what you talk about, he needs to be leading it and be a better leader. You know, in terms of leadership, Eric, I take to heart your point. I think the real leadership disappointment was when he came into office with this great wave of people behind him, that he didn't use that wind at his back, those people he had mobilized in his campaign, to overcome the power of corporate money and entrenched interest in our system. The super committee, I'm sort of heretical on this, but I have many in this country who agree with me, I think, that there's a misplaced obsession with debt, short-term debt and deficits in this country. The real national emergency crisis is jobs, and the best deficit reduction plan is to put people back to jobs. The super committee is right. off the radar right, on that. Right, but you can't so force people to hire. I mean, even we, you know, we talk about, and we ask CEOs this question all the time because we see all these statistics about big companies sitting on a lot of money. Companies have learned how to do more with less. It's an unfortunate reality in this country. We're a consumer-based economy, which also makes it tough to come back. You can't force people to hire. But you can create the conditions through public-private partnerships to inject funds into this economy to create jobs. And we were talking earlier about Black Thursday, Friday. I mean, you've yeah. got to create demand in this country. That's the key. And the other thing I would say is that, you know, at this Thanksgiving spirit, the gap between this country's ideals and reality, I think, the collision between the sense of an injustice, economic inequality, and downward mobility is forcing many to say, hey, look at never seen such income and wealth concentrated at the top, and yet the taxes are so low. We need fair share politics. And that's at the heart of the of my book and I ho I think at the heart of a beleaguered American dream. Yeah. Does he get reelected? Uh, never say never. I think it's going to be very tough and I think you know I think if he speaks in the way he is about fairness, economic justice as he did in New Hampshire and speaks more boldly. Yeah. All right. Katrina, thank, thank you. you very nice much.